Up until this point, we've mainly focused on what standards-based grading is and how to implement specific parts of it. Now it's time to make a slight shift in the workshop and see how this grading system impacts our day-to-day -day teaching. How long do we typically spend on a concept? Is there a specific way to design our lessons? What about checking for student understanding? We'll tackle all these questions in the next few videos, but first we're gonna see what a typical unit looks like. We will look at an actual unit in a minute, but first here are general rules of thumb. First, how many days should we spend teaching a concept? Overall, we should be flexible with the time we spend teaching a topic. It truly does depend on how our students are responding to the content. However, I found that my average is 6.7 days per concept. Also, the range of days I typically spend is 4 to 10. And it's important to note, these numbers are based on a schedule of 50 minute classes where I saw my students every day of the week. If you teach a block schedule, your numbers will be lower. So you may be wondering, how do we know when to use four days versus 10 days? For me, it depended on how important or difficult the concept was. Of course, all of the concepts on our checklist are important because that's why we included them on our list. However, many times there tend to be three or so concepts each year that are the most difficult or important for students to be successful moving forward. For these concepts, I lean toward using more days just to make sure students get plenty of time with them. But overall, the first time you teach a course, this will be a feel process based on how your classes respond. I found that there was a moment in nearly every unit where one day we'd show up and all of a sudden you can tell students are starting to really get the hang of a concept. When this happens, you know you're about ready to give them a quiz. Okay. Now that we've talked about the typical time spent on a unit, let's begin to take a look at an actual unit for my geometry curriculum. Here's the parallel lines unit. As you can see, we spent seven days working on this concept. But what happened during each class? Here's how I typically think through a unit. I almost always do an engaging, exploratory type activity on the first day of a topic. My go-tos are three-act math lessons and fun, exploratory digital lessons. Then, for the rest of the unit, it's mainly a mixture of notes, practice, engaging application activities, and spiraling assignments. I try not to get into a rut by always doing the same thing for practice, so I rotate some of my favorite practice structures to mix it up and generate more engagement. You can learn more about those in part 12 of the Unlocking Curiosity workshop. In addition, during every unit I always provide at least one ungraded formative assessment opportunity for students to show me what they know. I call them free chances to make a mistake, and I make sure we've been working on a concept for at least a couple days before giving one. Typically, the end of day three is the ideal time to provide a free chance. Also, every time we complete a free chance, we always have a warm up the following class day that focuses on the most common errors from the free chance the day before. Finally, during every unit, I always provide an opportunity to unpack the upcoming quiz as a class. We'll talk about this in depth later in the workshop, but basically I allow students to see the actual quiz with their group for five minutes, and then we have a brief discussion as a class about it. These usually happen two days before the quiz. That's the overall structure of what most of my units look like. Now let's briefly zoom into what each day was like for the parallel lines unit. Let's start with day one. Again, I almost always begin with a fun, engaging activity that tends to be more exploratory in nature. For this unit, we did a digital activity. My reason for starting with an engaging lesson first is to get students curious and bought into the topic. It's a great way to launch into a new unit. After we completed the activity, on this day, we went over the quiz from the previous unit. I always go over quizzes the day after they are given. Let's zoom back out to the overall unit. Earlier I mentioned that after day one, it's mainly a mixture of notes, practice, spiraling assignments, and engaging application activities. So let's look at the list of things we did each day. As you can see, every day we had a warm up and some kind of practice or spiraling. Also on days where we are learning something new, we have notes. Finally, there are some engaging activities mixed in to keep things fresh for students. We aren't doing exploratory activities like we did on day one because we're starting to build skill development, but we can still have fun while doing it. Honestly, we could spend an entire workshop on how to design these lessons but here's a quick breakdown of what a typical notes, practice, or spiraling is like. Let's start with notes. 
When I do notes, I like to do a blend of diving into why a concept works as well as the procedural skills needed to solve certain problems. In this handout in particular, we did some vocabulary work and we alternated between problems that focused on finding angle measures, reasoning, and algebraic methods. One really important key to designing notes is making sure to mix easy and hard problems. This is a tip that I read on Henry Pichiato's blog. He mentioned the need to avoid the temptation to always start easy and ramp our way up to hard problems. Instead, we should mix easy and hard, even unpredictably at times, so students don't anticipate a time where they need to give up because problems are too hard. Therefore, I try to mix easy and hard problems together in my notes, and this also allows students to see difficult problems more often. In addition, this is helpful for preparing for our 90 and 100 level questions on the upcoming quiz. Here's a quick look at a typical practice handout. Again, I try to mix easy and hard questions, and I try to hit 80 and 90 level and above questions. Many of these questions I make up on my own, but a lot of them are from textbooks or released exams. In addition to practice handouts, I like to spiral in concepts from previous units whenever I can in order to keep students fresh and also help prepare for retakes. These often are given out toward the last 15 minutes or so of class, and I usually make them based on common errors from previous quizzes. Here's the general structure one more time. The overall key is spending enough days for students to develop understanding of the concept, providing at least one ungraded formative assessment, mixing in challenging problems, and making sure to spice up the content with engaging structures. That's the high level view of what a typical unit looks like, but now it's time to go into more detail. We'll begin by looking at formative assessment, and that's our next video.